All right, hello everybody. This is Mary Clark from the Community Data Program. Uh, we're gonna start our webinar in about three more minutes. Uh, just let a few more people arrive. Uh, as we said before, this is our first time hosting over Zoom for one of our big full webinars. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we've been using it for our, our staff work for the last a while, and so we're happy to be able to uh, use it to be a little bit more interactive during our webinars with you as well. So we have a few more minutes. We have a whole team from StatsCan today with us, which we're very excited about. Before we get started, I'll also introduce you to my CDP colleagues that are with us. So I have Sasha with me, and Sasha is going to be um, doing a little bit more with the webinars over the next little while. So for any of you who are regular um, attendees of our webinars, you're going to see her name more often, um, and she will be the voice of your um, CDP host for the next few webinars um, and into the future. So welcome today, Sasha. Thank you. And I also have Mike. I can see he's down here. So um, Mike's our, our resident uh, data guru, CDP catalog man. Um, so any questions you have about um, community data program ordering, uh, what's coming out with the census uh, going forward and what's on our lineup to order, uh, you can talk to Mike about and he will answer any questions you have during this webinar. Um, and of course, you can follow up with him at any point. Thanks, Mary. It's disorienting being the presenter on this, you know, because you see the screen, but you don't even see the time or anything. So I'm trying to keep my eye on my clock. <laughs> All right, folks, I have on my clock, it says 1.30 p.m. and I'm on Eastern time and that's our start time. So uh, we are going to get going fairly quickly. So hello, I'm Mary Clark. I work at the Community Data Program in the Training and Capacity Building Arena. Um, we have a great team from StatsCan here today to share, us, um, to share with us just new things that are happening for 2021 census. Uh, I hope you guys are all excited to be in a census year. Uh, you know, at CDP, we talked about it being census day, and then we had census week. And so now I'm going to call the census month that we're still in, still doing census stuff, because uh, it really is a big deal for um, the members of the community data program. I know we really rely on census data. So it's nice to be in touch with some of the people working on the back end um, and, and putting all the questions together in, in the survey. So um, I'm not going to spend much more time introducing our stats can team or the census because you all know it fairly well. I just mentioned that if you do want to ask, um, ask any questions during the presentation, you can type them into your chat box and between Sasha and myself, we'll monitor them and make sure that uh, your questions come to the attention um, or stats can team. If any of you see a question that you want to um, take on, please feel free to go ahead and do that. Uh, and hopefully that will work seamlessly through the, the presentation. And then we'll do some question and answer at the end. As I said, I also have Mike here from Community Data. So he'll be able to answer any questions you have about census ordering coming from the Community Data Program side. And maybe what I'll do is I'll hand it over to Dory, who is going to do our presentation today. And Dory, do you want to just um, introduce your StatsCan colleagues that you have with you as well? Sure. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mary. Uh, bon après-midi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Dore Gaiku. I'm the chief responsible for the dissemination at the, uh, of the census of population. 
Um, I will see. Uh, I'm with colleagues today. Uh, so Andrea Levitt. So I guess they can introduce themselves unless I they want me to do. So Andrea, maybe you can start. Hi, I'm Andrea Lesh. I'm Assistant Director uh, and Census Subject Matter Secretariat at Statistica, and my team is responsible for the content on the census questionnaires and uh, the analysis coming out. Uh, thank you. Glenn? Hello, sorry folks. I, I had to take a quick phone call there. I was multitasking. It, it's that's what's going on now with the census, I guess. Uh, nice to meet everyone. Uh, uh, thank you. I'll I'll uh, turn it back to you, Duray. Sorry. So Glenn Glenn is actually the census manager. So I, as you can tell, he's managing things right now. Uh, census dissemination manager. Sorry. Um, yes, but we actually really appreciate all of you from StatScan being with us because I know this is a super busy time for you. And so it's nice because we get to sort of piggyback on the excitement that's happening in your office too. Uh, Hélène Castonguet should be online. I'm not sure if she's already joined. Um, if she's not, that's okay. And maybe Paul Schwetz also from StatScan. Well, Anyway, so it seems so far it would be us, uh, so Andrea, myself, and uh, and Glenn. So we can go to the to the next slide. Actually, uh, sorry, like um, uh, my presentation will be in English, but but um, je peux prendre des questions aussi en français si si y en a. Donc, uh, um, so the purpose of the presentation is really to go uh, over the dissemination uh, strategy for the census, but we we'll start with kind of a, a reminder um, of uh, the content. So as Mary said, the, the, the census has begun uh, already three weeks ago. Um, as you can tell, um, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, StatCan has to adapt uh, to ensure that the census is conducted throughout the country in the best possible way using a safe approach. So the collection procedure for the census were redesigned to ensure that respondents and census employees are safe by limiting the amount of contact needed to participate um, in this exercise. So every reasonable attempt is being made to to made sorry made to collect the, the information without uh, coming into contact with respondents. In person visits will take place only when other options are not available. So we are reminding um, everyone through our different media that completing the the census. Uh, questionnaire online is the best way to stay home and stay safe while fulfilling our census uh, obligation. So the respondents without reliable access to the internet can always uh, call the census airline to complete the census questionnaire over the phone. And um, so far collection is going well and uh, we are receiving more and more electronic uh, returns than, uh, than planned. So we can go to the next slide please. So a bit more about the collection procedures. So if a census questionnaire is not completed online or over the phone, um, StatCan will begin non-response follow-up activities. So census employees will have increased access to the phone numbers of respondents so that follow-up um, is possible and can be done over the phone. In cases where a census employee is sent to a dwelling for non-response follow-up, a new no-contact protocol will be uh, followed. And under this protocol, no, inter no interviews will be conducted inside respondents um, dwelling. The interviews will instead be physically distanced and the census employee will be required to wear um, personal safety equipment in, in accordance with guidelines from public health authorities. Let's go to the next one, please. So what about remote Northern and uh, indigenous communities? So you, may, you might be aware that in past censuses, uh, some remote Northern and First Nation communities were enumerated using a traditional canvasser approach. Under this approach, Statistic Canada census employee will administer questionnaires in the dwelling, uh, in the dwellings of uh, the respondents between February and July. Sometimes this will be done using census employees dispatched to the community from Southern part of, uh, of Canada. This, has, this approach changed to, um, due, due to COVID in 2021 to protect the public health in those communities. 
So early enumeration did not take place for the 2021 census, but instead coincides with regular census activities. Second is working closely with uh, those communities and provincial and territorial authorities to implement the new approach. Furthermore, collection through self-response is available in these remote uh, Northern and First Nation communities for the first time in 2021. The plan involves StatCan and emeritus distributing invitations for online, for online completion of census forms. And the enumerators are hired locally and follow a protocol that avoids them and their, sorry, their entry into uh, dwellings. In the case of in-person visit, enumerators are required to wear personal safety equipment that are provided by StatCan, as well as to maintain uh, proper physical distancing in accordance with guidelines from public health authorities. The respondents are also able to complete a questionnaire with the help of Statistic Canada employee by calling the census helpline. And where possible, completing the, quest, the census questionnaire online is, as I said earlier, the, the best and safer uh, way. So we can go to the next slide. Um, a bit about, um, so this slide talks about the collective dwellings. So residents of most collective dwellings are not able to complete their own census questionnaire for the 2021 census. Um, and this is um, due to the census, uh, sorry, <laughs> to the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, as it was done to, uh, for the 2016 census, enumerating residents using the administrative records is the most efficient uh, method for gathering the information. So no census employee from StatCan is permitted to visit or enter institutional collective dwellings, especially for, um, especially for the dwellings um, that are housing residents who are vulnerable to COVID-19. So for instance, senior citizens uh, or um, hospitals. For correctional facilities, administrative records will be used uh, using the Canadian Correctional Sur Services Survey. Um, and this will replace collection for federal, provincial, and territorial uh, custodial facilities. Letters or emails with secure, with secure access codes for online response were sent to the administrators of most collective dwellings, and all follow-up contact is being performed by mail, email, or phone. So um, enumerating residents using uh, administrative records is the most efficient method for gathering the information for StatCan and uh, to help us produce high quality population counts as well as profile of the whole Canadian population. For some type of dwellings in which there is no administrator present or where there are no available uh, administrative records, alternative arrangements are being made. For instance, in the case of lodging or uh, rooming houses, um, census employees will complete a census questionnaire with the respondents at their door. You can go to the next slide. So um, as I'm sure you're aware, the census is important for various reasons. Uh, census data are used for, and those are just examples, like to calculate transfer uh, uh, payments between different levels of government, to determine representation in parliament, plan daycare, schools, hospitals, public transportation, uh, emergency services. Um, they are helpful also for the business community. And they help, like recently, they help uh, planning um, the vaccine distribution and the vaccine communication as well. And they serve as benchmarks uh, for, for many uh, activities. So we can go to the next one, the next slide. And uh, so this, um, for the next few, in the next few slides, I will discuss the, uh, the new content um, about um, that, 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 uh, that appear now in the, in the questionnaire. So we can go to the next, thank you. So the content was developed uh, with, with and for Canadians through extensive consultations, uh, discussions and testing. So the questions um, include, so uh, we have new questions to, to, to measure Canada's growing diversity and to ensure results are more reflective of the Canadian society. And uh, so we, we can go to the next one. I will start with the short form. Um, so we have a short and a long form. So in the short form, there is returning content from 2016 uh, for ongoing trend analysis for demographics and language. 
But we also have three new set of questions. And in the next few slides, I will discuss uh, each of them with more details. So we have questions about gender, uh, the Canadian military experience, as well as instruction in the official minority language. You can go to the next slide, please. So we start with uh, sex at birth and gender. During the 2016 census and when participating in surveys, some Canadians expressed dissatisfaction with the question on sex, which gave Canadians only two options, male or female. Following the 2016 uh, census, St Statistics Canada conducted many consultations with experts, academics, as well as the LGBTQ2 communities in order to understand the needs and the challenges associated with producing reliable data on the trans and non-binary population in Canada. And in April 2018, that can released a new standard on gender, as well as a revised standard on sex at birth. Since then, Stacan has implemented a question on gender in many of its data collection vehicles, and we started to, result, to uh, release results. So on the slide, you can see how the questions look like. So the first one, like the one at the top, question two, um, ask about the sex uh, assigned at birth, and this will ensure that historical comparability is um, possible. Question three, the second one, the one at the bottom, um, allows respondents who are trans or non-binary to self-identify themselves. And this will assist in addressing the data gap, the data gaps that were identified. You can go to the next slide. Thank you. So the, the question on the veterans and military service is used to determine the number of Canadians who have previously served or are currently serving as members of the Canadian Armed Forces. The main purpose of the question is to fill a significant uh, veteran related data gap to help better serve this population by informing various policies and programs administered for instance by the um, Veteran Affairs Canada, the Department of National Defense, uh, the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, and other veteran uh, support organizations. You can go to the next. The third, the third set of questions are about um, the language of instruction. So the purpose of adding those questions about the education in the minority official language at the primary and secondary level um, is to determine the number of children of right holders under the three criteria set out in the uh, Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom. The parents' mother tongue, the parents' language of instructions, and the, the siblings' language of instruction. We can go to the next. So if the person attended a regular French school, questions are, questions are then asked about the number of years at primary and secondary level. Similar questions are asked for of, lang of English language uh, education in English language minority geographies. So on this slide, for instance, you see that um, those are the questions that are asked outside of Quebec, and they are about um, primary or secondary uh, schooling in French. And if we go to the next slide, we'll see that those are for uh, those are the questions for individuals located in Quebec. And there, the questions would be about English uh, language school. You can go to the next slide. So now we talk about we will talk about the long form. So the long form is used by uh, twenty five percent of households, and it contains uh, five new uh, questions. And in the next slides, I will talk about each of them. Uh, so they talk about so the, those new questions are about. Uh, uh, like, okay, so let's start with this one. No, that's fine, you, you can go to the next, that's fine, <laughs> thanks. So we start with a membership within a METI organization or settlement. So this new question is, um, uh, was identified, is, is there because it was, um, there was a gap that was identified uh, following the 2016 census engagement. And um, the purpose of the question is to provide more detailed information on the METI population to support policies and programs for Canada and for meeting individuals um, and organizations. So with this new question, it will be possible to differentiate, differentiate 
uh, between citizens of Meteor governments uh, that have signed the Canada Meti Nation Accord and Meti individuals outside these entities. So on the questionnaire, you, on the question, sorry, you can see that um, the, the, the respondents can put the name of the organization uh, either by clicking or they can enter, they sp can specify themselves the, 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 the organization or settlement. You can go to the next. So this question is about enrollment under a new land claims agreement. And it's, um, um, it was also a gap that was identified during uh, our engagement um, following the 2016 census. The main purpose of the question is to provide additional detail of, of, for the Inu population to better support evidence-based decision-making by the government of Canada, as well as by Inu government and organizations. So similar to the METI question, you can see that uh, the respondent can identify the specific agreement uh, that they may enroll in. And uh, there is also an option to, for, for, for the respondents to specify the agreement. And go to the next one. Um, so the last set of questions uh, that are uh, new are about the labor market information. So, um, to better understand the labor market issues such as underemployment or the quality of employment and as well as labor market attachment, two questions have been added to the 2021 census long form. The main, like the first one is about the main reason an individual worked less than 49 weeks during the year preceding the census. So this is the question that you can see here. Uh, on the next slide, we have the main reason um, um, the person worked mostly part-time instead of full-time in 2020. And again, we have a list of reasons like personal uh, preference, students, uh, business condition, um, care for own children, et cetera. And you can, the respondent can also specify um, the, the, the reasons themselves. So that's two questions. A third question on the next slide. Uh, will help us identify persons who are in per a permanent fixed term or casual position. So this question is really about the employee uh, um, by position with the uh, unpaid worker or self-employed. So for the employee, we will be able to, say, to see whether they are in the permanent fixed term or casual position. And then on the next slide, there is also a new question on uh, commuting to work. So um, the commuting to work question is not new per se in the census because before we had a question that was um, only about the main, um, the main mode of commuting. The, the, the real um, kind of the new aspect of this question is that now we ask about all um, um, modes of uh, commuting. Um, and this is important because the 2019 census test, just so that you know, identified 12% of respondents use more than one mode. For example, uh, they could drive to a train station, park there, uh, take the train into the city, and then perhaps use the subway. And um, so this um, new question will help us identify multi-mode uh, of commuting. So that's kind of the the, the uh, yeah the 52a so the the top part of the question but with uh, the the bottom part of the question b we will still be able to identify the main mode of commuting we have a we have a question about the last question on part-time hours yep um and so the question is would covid19 pandemic impacts be coded as a business connect condition for did not work part-time hours so maybe I'll we'll go back to that slide. Uh, uh, for part-time hours, would a business condition be coded for COVID-related problems? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not the subject matter. Um, I feel COVID. I feel COVID. I feel it depends, like whether if it's COVID on the same on the like if it's the business that was closed because of uh, let's say the restrictions 
um, I would say so, uh, but it's better to contact the census airline to, to have um, a better, um, uh, because like I see two things, like if it's COVID, like you, the way you will see, you will say that COVID impacts yourself, it would be more under the illness or incapacity of this person, which is the second to last bullet. But if it's about the fact that your business did not, uh, could not um, open due to restrictions, then I feel, yes, it's fair to say that it's under business condition. Right, yeah. It's not about your ability to go to work. It's okay. about your business's ability to operate. Yeah. yeah. Andrea, did you have something you want to add to that? I was going to say that we do that because of COVID, but people will not necessarily be able to work and uh, there is some help text available to respondents um, filling out their questionnaires uh, through the electronic questionnaire as well as on our uh, FAQs on our website. So there's, uh, yeah, there's help there as well as I guess people can write in the, the reason specifically in the, the write-in box and we'll use that to help code, I guess, to specific, uh, the correct place. Yeah, I think the writing answers are really helpful to get a bit more out of this as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then Michael's commenting that it will be helpful for the writing answers will be helpful to then code the, the other answers that come through. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so anybody else, if you have questions, please um, put them in the chat box. We are watching them as we go. And I will move us back to, um, did you want to say anything else about commuting to work? Uh, no. But I think I was done there. Yeah. So religion is not new per se, because it's a question that has been around since uh, 1871, but it's asked, uh, it's, it, not, it is not asked at each census, it's every 10 years. So the last time it was asked was in 2011. Um, kind of a slight but important difference with uh, previous cycles is that we will have more examples, I think uh, up to uh, 200 examples of religions and denominations. And we think that by providing this long list of examples, it will allow uh, respondents, respondents to be more precise in terms of uh, specific denominations. Then go to the last, so, sorry, to the next. Um, and actually the last. <laughs> so um, there is a new question on housing and this is about um, so, so far I've been talking about the long form, um, but there are actually two long forms. So the, let's say usual long form, the 2AL form uh, that uh, people will fill um, everywhere in Canada and the 2AR uh, for, for form, sorry, that is similar to the 2AL, but that is used in Northern and remote and reserve areas only. So it contains similar information um, as the long form questionnaire but the examples are adapted to remote regions and First Nation communities, as well as two additional questions on then housing. And for the 2021 uh, census, we have added a question to, the, to this questionnaire on the user and occupancy fees collected in then housing. So this complements the rent and mortgage payments and property taxes concept for renters and owners so that nationwide, Housing affordability, affordability uh, research can be conducted in Canada. And uh, this brand new question will assist in calculating housing affordability in uh, indigenous, communi indigenous communities as well. So we can go to the last part of my presentation. The next uh, Dory, time. we do yeah. have a question on the religion codings. Sure. Sure. So the question is, will religion codings be comparable to 2011? The 2011 ones were not very comparable to 2001 for the smaller denominations. Uh, I, Andrea, would you know? I would, I would be tempted to say uh, yes, but I, I'm not sure. Andrea, would you know how they code? Because it's true that they might be similar. Uh, they might be closer to the 20, sorry, the 20, zero, so the, the 01 cycle, it might be the case, uh, but I'm not sure. Um, We're expecting to be comparable. I realized that in 20, uh, 2011, I'm getting years mixed with the NHS. Uh, we did offer some cautionary, uh, I guess, uh, notes uh, due to the fact that it was um, voluntary and we weren't certain of the quality. 
uh, but we are expecting that comparisons will be able to be made and we can make those as well across back to 2001 or earlier years. Okay, Matt, as a follow-up comment, he says, apart from the issues with the NHS, the actual categories were slightly different. So I will, I will take notes and ask um, the, the SM and uh, we'll get back to you. Okay, so that one we can follow up on. As, as Andrea mentioned, like it's, um, it's important for, for us to have uh, dimensions or categories that are uh, historically comparable. So, um, so that should be the case. Okay, great. So um, the last part of the presentation is about the dissemination strategy. We can go to the next, yeah. So the goal of our strategy is to better meet um, our users. The, our engagement has been extensive with numerous audiences that include the federal government, uh, provincial, territorial, indigenous and local governments as well, NGOs, associations, academia, business, and also consultation with the general public. And our strategy will um, address what we've heard um, during, those, uh, during this consultation. And so far we have heard three main things that will help shape our strategy. Uh, one is the impact of COVID. So for example, families, what is the impact of COVID on families? How is Canada changing? So like a general, um, shouldn't say general, but like different patterns that uh, Canada has been changed, has changed sorry, since uh, the last cycle. And also what are the challenges faced by certain groups? So there was a call for a bit for uh, um, data on specific groups as well as um, uh, lower level of geography. Then go to the next slide, thank you. So we identified three strategies to focus um, on for our dissemination. So the first one is to maximize reach to our various users. The next is to strengthen uh, partnerships and collaboration. And finally, we want to also to increase the value of the statistical information. And in my next slides, I will discuss each of them in uh, detail. So maximize reach. So by maximizing reach, we mean that we want to offer uh, user-friendly products and flexible dissemination systems. For example, we want to include options on how to access data, and like uh, um, HTML, for instance, uh, uh, downloads, new technology um, beyond 2020, uh, for example. Uh, we want to increase the use of, uh, sorry, the user knowledge base by providing instruction and training materials to help users make sense of the data. Uh, we want to provide easier access to the information and improve the timeliness, particularly for our reference materials. And uh, also we will release microdata earlier than in previous cycles. And we will have custom services that uh, should be also faster. As well, we are enhancing our presence on social media. You may have seen our uh, promotional materials and uh, um, on the internet, for instance, or on uh, uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Insta, Reddit. Like, um, so we're in increasing our presence on social media as well. Um, we will also release results via videos using uh, American and Quebec Sign Language for our deaf community. Go to the next one, please. The next strategy is to strengthen partnership and collaborate on products. So we, for, under this strategy, um, uh, we want to share an, an outreach um, to increase the trust and transparency through information sharing. Um, so this means that we, um, we will improve uh, the ways we are sharing our information. Uh, we will communicate by conduct, conducting webinars and the round tables around the time of major releases. Uh, and also in terms of collaboration, we will design and define, we hope we can design and define variables, classification as well as products with our partners in advance. So um, this is really a call to anyone in this group. If you have ideas, um, we are here to hear about uh, them and uh, we will listen to your suggestions and uh, uh, you can touch base with us uh, later and we will try to 
to work together on, um, on products. And we mean it, it's not just, uh, just because it looks good or anything. Uh, on we appreciate that, Dorian. <laughs> okay. Next slide, please. So the third strategy is to increase the value of statistical information. And we will achieve this by uh, being relevant. For example, grouping topics together and release products that address key societal questions of the day uh, through our analysis, for example. Integrate data from non-sensor sources to provide additional context. Publishing, sorry, publishing schedules, reference materials, and products uh, previews ahead of uh, major releases to help users prepare for those upcoming releases. And actually, um, we have a website uh, like um, that. Maybe we, I can do a quick demo if Ken is not able to do it. Like uh, after after the this uh, uh, presentation, where we already have um, those schedules um, uh, released. And finally, we will provide information in alternative formats and release new analysis and data beyond the day of release. So we can go to the next one, please. So this um, slide shows the release schedule. Um, and it's like the one that I just mentioned online in the, on the website has more details like with actual dates. This, in this one, you can see it can, it can give you a sense of uh, the timing and as you can tell is really it's really close to what was uh, released in the previous cycle. Uh, so our release start with uh, publication of reference products at the end of 2021 and will continue um, in 22 and beyond. So in November of 2021 uh, ahead of the major data releases we will have reference products such as the guide to the census of population and the census dictionary uh, that will be released and they will help users familiarize themselves with the census information and tools. Social media will also be used for the promotion of the upcoming census releases. Uh, the uncertain impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on Census 21 will make these reference products and specific communications extremely important because we will use them to um, share information with the users about what they can or cannot expect from the Census 21 data. There will also be communications related to this, the COVID-19 pandemic in the release materials, including footnotes in data tables and releases as uh, necessary. For the various major day of release, we we'll start with uh, the population and whaling in February. A full line of product will be offered to our users. So we will have analytical and data products, uh, as well as, a ref as reference products to help users navigate the information. Visualization tools such as infographics and other interactive graphs, graphs sorry, will be uh, important to help with telling the story and to share key messages with Canadians. After the major day of uh, release, we will publish additional products that will continue to address specific user needs. These include additional analysis and data tables, uh, our indigenous population profile and microdata. Uh, in the RDC, so in the research data centers, as well as, as PUMF files, uh, to name a few. So again, we would like your inputs on what we are planning and welcome your insights and suggestions for storylines um, we can tell, and also areas where we could collaborate together. If you're a regular user of our census information and see any gaps that you think should, we should fill, um, for example, changes in data tables, um, please do let us know so you can contact myself, Andrea or Glenn, and we will work with uh, our teams to, to meet these information needs if possible. So as I said uh, on the next, uh, the next slide, which is the last. Oh, I do have a couple of questions for you. Do you want them now yeah, or do you want them? Okay. Uh, as you wish. Okay, let's do them now. Okay. <laughs> so I have a question from Esther about, will any information be available in other languages besides English and French? Um, no, it's only, it will be the, the official languages, French and English. Okay. There might be, Andrea, please correct me if I'm wrong, but there might be, um, no, for the dissemination, sorry, I haven't said anything. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, French and English. Is there any discussion or possibility of getting in other languages if people were requesting it? 
uh, it depends. Like I guess we we've organized just to give you an example, uh, mm -hmm. like a month or so. No, not a month. Like two three days before the 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 start of the census, we had a meeting with uh, the with a, a group that uh, speaks Spanish. Mm -hmm. So we were able to conduct that meeting in Spanish, not myself, of course, but uh, we were able to do it. So, so ad hoc requests like that could be, I think that could be uh, done for specific, um, let's say, meeting. But in terms of a full release strategy in, uh, in other languages, I, I'm, uh, I will let Andrea and Glenn uh, talk about it if they have more. But from where I stand, that's, uh, it's really French and English. Okay, great. Um, Andrea? Yeah, Andrea. I, I, hopefully oh, we say the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the plans are to release in the official languages only in terms of the dissemination product line. Okay. So we, want to say we are looking at possibly doing a little bit in the sign languages. Um, it's not uh, for sure right now, but we're looking at that. And there is materials up on our website in, in terms of other languages to help with collection. So Indigenous languages and uh, other languages. All right, Esther, you can let me know if that uh, answers your question. I'll look and see if there's any follow up from you. Um, and we have a question about will municipalities be able to participate in the media mock ups prior to each release date? Uh, what do you mean by media mock ups? Uh, Michael, um, do you want to clarify? Are these the lock ups? Yeah. Sorry, lock ups. Oh, lock -ups. Lock -ups. Sorry. Uh, we, like Glenn, Glenn and Andrew, I have an answer, but I guess maybe Glenn and Andrew, if you want to say something. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, the, the media lockups are still being worked out, uh, given the COVID situation, uh, mm -hmm. the ways that can is handled lockups in general has, has uh, been affected. Right now, um, it's my understanding that it, mm -hmm. the media lockups are, are going to be um, provided to registered media outlets only. Um, yeah, but again, the, the details there are still being worked out at this stage as to what can be done. The traditional overnight, overnight lockup that we've had in the past will likely not occur, but it's our comm team that is, being, is working on that and um, they'll be reaching out to media outlets to uh, first see what the, the, the needs are and how we can fulfill those needs. So I'll follow up on that. There's a, a comment from Matt saying, echoing Michael's comment as your biggest data users, it'd be wonderful to be afforded the same courtesy as journalists on seeing the data first. Yeah, so if there is a way of including municipalities, you've got many people who'd love to be involved. Yeah, logistically, we're still trying to figure it out. It has traditionally been uh, based on the media lockups where in, in at head office in an overnight lockup room um, with, uh, and it was uh, limited, limited capacity. Um, I, I don't believe that we are gonna be able to do the same thing this time around, especially if we have the same restrictions in place. So um, we'll, we can certainly follow back up with the group and, and let them know what the plans will be down the road. Okay, and there was a follow up comment from Esther about the languages saying, thanks, who do we contact to have those sessions like the one we did in Spanish. Uh, we have a lot of Arabic speakers who'd appreciate something like that. So I'm not sure it's possible, but let you, the person can contact me and uh, I will be in touch with, uh, with uh, the groups, like the communi our communication. Oh, yeah. Outreach people, yeah. And so Esther, I'd really encourage you to, uh, to put something together and just reach out to StatsCan because they are trying to be uh, very responsive to comments and, and thoughts coming from the community. So um, let them know and maybe you can just have a conversation about that and see if you can work something out. Okay, I think there was another question that I'm, yes. Okay, another question. Are there any changes in structural types of dwelling versus 2016? I assume that's, are there any questions, any changes to the questions on structural types? I don't think Not so. that I'm aware of, Lynn, or I think the same, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not aware. If there's anything different, we'll go back. Was our answer clear? Like, we don't think that there was any. Okay, so hang on. We got another question about uh, Ray Ann says there's a question of Punjabi. Sorry, I'm going to butcher this Punjabi Gurmukhi and Punjabi Shamuki. Um, is this is this regarding the census question itself? Yes, actually, what happens is that uh, the text and the lexicon is uh, entirely different. Uh, so, but 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 the census only has one, maybe Punjabi. Oh, I see. So there there needs to be a distinction between the two languages. That is correct because it's written differently. One is uh, Arabic-like script, and the mm -hmm. other one is like Sanskrit-like script. Mm -hmm. Not only that, um, the the majority of colloquial words differ. Uh, a lot. Okay, so folks at Stats Can, do you want to make a note of that? That's something we can follow up on. Sure. So I, I, I'm reading. So basically, the, the issue being that there's only only one um, one version of Punjabi that is that is correct. Actually, there was a lot of awareness this year uh, in the community regarding that. Because uh, you see, uh, the mother tongue still is called Punjabi, but you know, it's uh, between the two ethnicities and it's too, uh, too different. Because the script, is, one has Shahmukhi and the other one is Gurmukhi. So if you go to BC, you will see signs in Gurmukhi because that's what mm -hmm. uh, that script is. Right, but functionally <laughs> we're looking at two languages. That is correct, yeah. Right, and so. In terms of in terms of response, we're, we're leaving it up to respondents to I guess, indicate their own mother tongue or language is spoken. And we coded uh, with as much detail as we can and come dissemination time, we will uh, release the information accordingly. Thank you so much. I think this is a one long pending issue. Thank you so much. Thank you for your okay. question, Ryan. Thank you very much. We uh, language follows as well. Uh, okay, so Emily had a, a clarification question on the two questions on commuting mode. Um, so I can actually just, sorry, don't blink too quickly because I'm going to just get us back. Oh, there it was, there it was. There it is, commuting. So she just wants you to clarify the difference between the two questions again, the A and the B part. So in the A, you can list all of them. Um, so if I take my case, Usually, like before COVID, I would take my car to the park and ride, and then I would take the bus. So here I would take, I will, I will uh, say car, then bus. So it would be two, two uh, modes. And in the in B, like you need to uh, indicate the main mode. So the main mode is the one that takes most of the time, uh, and this is um, historically what was collected in the past. So 52A is the new part of the question. 52B have been, has been around before. The main mode has been around before. Is that clear? Huh. What about when mode depends on type of, time of the year? Um, hmm, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, um, I'll chime in. Is this part of why we're we're answering based on what you're doing on May 11th? Yeah, right? that's and true. So they did like, what, thanks, how exactly. are you commuting exactly. in May when you exactly. go to work? Yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And all, all of these questions are really about May 11th. Thanks, thanks for mm -hmm. that uh, important reminder. Yeah. Yeah, and so that is it. It really is truly that snapshot in time, right? How did you commute on that day? Exactly. And that will hopefully. And that yeah, may sure not enough. reflect, yeah, that may not reflect your uh, kind of condition throughout the year, but it's really on May 11th. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then there was a question about um, commuting. Emily's following up saying, how will this be affected by people sometimes working from home due to COVID? Um, and it, it, it will be impacted, right? <laughs> By yeah. people working from home. Yeah. yeah and, and as Andrea mentioned, uh, all of these questions on the electronic questionnaire, you have uh, an help, which mm -hmm. helps uh, users, like, which helps the, the users, like, basically guide the user on how to answer those questions. Um, but yes, it's really like if you're at home, um, yeah, that's, uh, that would be the, 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 the question, the, sorry, the answer. Yeah, the, this answering the question for me and and is going to be really interesting, I think, because so many people are, are living in lockdown in May. Um, you know, I was in lockdown on, in May, so uh, it's going to capture a lot of that information, right? But then it's also a weird year for everybody. Can I Sorry, just Andrea? You, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Snapshot of 2011. Uh, at the time of our release next November 2022, we do hope to supplement the information so that uh, uh, people that kind of want to see what uh, post-pandemic looks like will have some information to share at that point as well. So we'll have a snapshot of uh, the pandemic and hopefully following as well. We all look forward to that one, Jim. Or Andrea. Um, okay, so I think that's my questions that I have right now. So let's let Jerry finish off the presentation here. And I think we do have time for um, a share of the website if we want to do that, Jerry. Do you want me to take control or? Sure, yeah. Okay, so bear with us, everybody. And I'm going to pass it over. And Jerry's going to just take you into the StatsCan website for a minute. Let's see. Uh, share screen. And please feel free, we'll keep an eye still on the questions coming through the chat box as well. So do you see it? Uh, it's coming through. There, there it is. Uh, Glenn, do, do you want to work them or can I do it freestyle? Yeah, you can do it freestyle, Duray, <laughs> go for it. Okay, so, so this is the census dissemination planning um, that has been out since um, about two weeks ago. And it provides you with uh, an overview. So first of all, the link is available in the in the um, in the presentation. Um, so uh, it provides you with an overview of uh, what's happening with the census. And I think uh, something that is important for you is the the release plans, um, and we have them by theme, as well as by topic. Uh, so you will see the actual dates um, of. Uh, um, of the releases. So for instance, the thing that we talked about in terms of uh, um, commuting um, will be under the changing dynamics of the Canadian labor force and how people get to work. Um, something really important, um, it's also, uh, there's a section about how to get involved. Uh, this is where you can share your thoughts and ideas with us. Um, like um, it tells you um, a bit about our consultation strategy and that again, we're welcoming uh, your feedback and inquiries. And also um, we have there something about the products and services in terms of um, like uh, what we, um, like a mapping of the, the type of products that we will have data products, analytical products, reference materials, uh, data visualizations, uh, geographic products, and also custom services. Uh, sorry. Uh, the West New section we will keep you informed of uh, any uh, important uh, information that we would like to share with you. And there's also a tab about the, the ongoing census of agriculture. I think that ends my freestyle, Glenn. Do you want to add anything else? No, that, that was great, DeRay. Um, maybe just uh, uh, under the release plans, there's yep. a couple of, uh, of little features there. Um, you oh, have yes. a downloadable calendar or a printable bookmark. Um, you can download that calendar to your uh, iPhone or tablet or, 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 or smartphone. And uh, I think it'll give, it gives you a reminder on the dates that you see in the, uh, 
the release dates and it will give you a, 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 I guess, a reminder just before it happens. So that was it. So we'll stop sharing. Unless there are questions on the about the website. We'll just give people a minute if there's any other questions, if you'd like to have Jure show you anything else, or we can have Glenn pop in too and, and show you anything else on the website. Uh, there's a comment from Matt saying the downloadable calendar is very handy. I also think that's really neat. It's a smart, smart thing to do. As much as we all love to just check the stats can calendar once a week, sometimes it's nice to have it integrated into our other ones. All right, there's a question from Sarah Crawford asking about structural dwellings. Is there a way to distinguish laneway homes or secondary suites? Um, I think I think the question is about the the census is about your your principal house, like your principal dwelling. But mm -hmm. Andrea, maybe I'm maybe you're wrong. If you want, because I, I'm not sure you will be able to distinguish because it's only about one, I think. Smith's question was trying to match up. Was it in the information on uh, secondary suites or secondary residences? The question is Is there a way to distinguish laneway homes or secondary suites? Um, so, during collection, I suppose. Um, what do you mean in terms of we're seeing the information? Not clear, is it? Um, you, you, you and if we do try to collect the sound. every single dwelling for uh, a lane, we have, it should be part of our, um, our, our good engineering was with, with uh, Elaine there. She might have more information. She used to join us from geography. In any case, we're collecting that. We're also collecting secondary residences in terms of, I guess, cottages versus the main residence. And, uh, people would indicate if uh, uh, if some, a place was cottage that they don't typically live in, then it would be a dwelling counted, but uh, without the population there. Uh, Andrea, okay. I'm here. Oh, you are uh, there. Good not there. me who would be responsible. It's demography division. Okay, they're not here. Hopefully, so I am that I, okay, I, so I would say it's it's a difficult concept, right? Uh, I think what you're alluding to is something that's that's uh, is new or is is an emerging trend, like these backyard. Uh, I think what's happening out in in the West Coast backyard dwellings that aren't like real dwellings they're sort of attached to the house or or the, I think those are things that are being are being looked at and as Elaine said demography division is is uh, aware of them and they're looking at them um, if it's a rented room in a dwelling that's treated as a as part of the dwelling the singular dwelling it's not distinguished it's the 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 person that rents that room has the option to get their own census form um, but it's still considered as part of that dwelling. If it is a true apartment, they uh, would get their own census form separate from the other uh, dwelling or main house. So uh, there is a lot of that information will come out in the dwelling reference guide. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it, it, and that's slated to be released uh, in after the I think after the population and uh, or it might be. I think, DeRay, do you remember, is that one in March as well, the, the yeah. dwelling reference guide, or is that earlier? No, I, th I think it comes with, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit earlier than that. Yeah. I think it would be uh, around February. Yeah. Okay. Sarah, do you want us to follow up? I think there's a couple of people asking about that. Um, Elizabeth and Sarah, do you want us to follow up Hi. and see if we can yeah. get more? Go ahead, Sarah. Hi. Yeah, um, it's really, it's always been very difficult to identify secondary suites and laneway homes through the census information. So I was just wondering if, yeah, if you could follow up with me, that would be great. Anything, um, well, it looks like perhaps nothing has changed from the last census, but um, if you have further information on the dwelling types, that would be really helpful. Thank you. 
Okay, great. We'll do our best to follow up on that. Thanks. Okay, so we have a question on cross tabs. So will we be able to get cross tab data for race, ethnicity, indigenous identity, immigration status with income and shelter costs? Um, you see that in your chat, so you have them listed in front of you. I, I, so I, the main question is, are you asking from a standard product line or are you asking as a custom request? Um, I guess you can answer it both because we're clearly <laughs> yeah. interested so, uh, in also I, the ability I, to I, even get it customized. Right? Yeah, at this at this point, uh, the the mm -hmm. product like the the actual details of the cross tabulation, the data tables are still being worked on by subject matter. Um, so uh, I can't say specifically that 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 one table would exist. Um, I will say that uh, um, it. it even if, if it does, it still will be subject to confidentiality and all the rules that pertain to it, right? And so um, that will still be in place. Um, but I don't know if that specific one is uh, is one of the ones that's being built as part of the standard products, but we'll make note of it and, and, and pass that along to subject matter so that they can consider that design as one of their tables. We, we, also, will, we also will make note of that request, Diana, if... Uh... If that's of interest to you, if you want to uh, just send an email uh, indicating, you can also indicate with more detail uh, specifically what you're looking for. But uh, that might be a request for us to, to do that many cross tabulations, particularly if we're looking at the, at the census subdivision level or lower, that many cross tabs might be a bit difficult. I don't know if that many comes into that many public the accessible tables. Yeah, that's probably custom word or territory. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just making sure we, we're not jumping too much. Okay. Uh, Louisa asks, are you place of work? Is there concerns about people just providing their home address as place of work? Oh, I hadn't even thought about that, that your employer's office still exists, your place of work still exists, yet you're working from home. Hmm. Was there any worry about that? I think in the, um, in the help, uh, they, 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 they cover that type of uh, cases. And I think if you're working from home, like your place would be uh, where you are on uh, May 11th. So, so it's expected that um, there will be clearly a different uh, trend in 2021 because of COVID. Are you able to see how many times people click on those help questions while they go through their census? Uh, I know we have metrics about the people, we, but that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. we actually do it really that closely. If, uh, people are using the help uh, button as well mm -hmm. as to help clarify for people. Uh, we're working at those as well. And I think the, the comment earlier about Punjabi might well have been one of the edits that popped up to ask for a clarification of, of a language. We are looking at those. That's very cool. Okay, so. Thank you so much. I did send a detailed note to Dur. Dure? Dure, yeah. Dure, okay, great. Dure, and uh, you could connect with me if you want, and I can try to explain as much as I can. Thank sure. you. Thanks. Great, thank you, Ryan. Okay, um, Michael made a comment about laneway dwellings. So a laneway dwelling is a separate dwelling and the primary residence of the household occupying it and may not be attached to the main structure. Right, so that's the general definition of laneway dwelling. So I guess the question is census wise, is a laneway dwelling occupied by a renter that's included in the whole household? Um, as a census, or does the laneway dwelling get identified as its own household census wise? And that would really depend on whether it had its own address. Is that right? Like if it had an apartment unit or like a suite number or something. That would be my own. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, do you want to ask your question instead of me just reading it out? 
Sure. Uh, I, we, you answered some of this uh, in our leads meeting, but I thought it'd be good to talk about it again for this group in how a lot of the data tables are typically available. Uh, I'm, most data tables are available down to the CMA level, uh, but noticing that more and more you're releasing uh, publicly available uh, tables at the CSD level or lower. And so maybe you could just speak to if and how this trend will continue. Then go ahead. Yeah, so, so this is something that we did here through the dissemination consultation and it's, it's our intention to release as much data down to the CSD level as possible. So that's sort of a, a principle we would like to follow for 2016. Um, but the, the, there are some challenges. There are some municipalities that are very, very small and, and it results in very little data actually going out because there's a lot of suppression. So we're trying to figure out what the, the appropriate level is. There may be a population threshold on some of those CSD level files. Um, that's something we're still trying to figure out and what that right threshold is. Um, we are, we are uh, you know, this is, this is one of the things we would like to do. However, we are, we are um, reaching pretty much the, the upper limits of what our uh, tabulation capacity can handle. Um, we, are, we are estimating a significant increase in the number of cells that will be released uh, with the 2021 census. And uh, and the capacity to to do all that, it, we're 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 really we're really reaching the limits of what we're capable of doing right now. But yes, it is our intention to go to at least the CSD level for almost every table. Oh, that's excellent. That's uh, our. I mean, that's what our members are are interested in is getting data at that level. And just to speak to, I mean, that idea of of whether there's uh, whether there's data being suppressed or not. I mean, from our, from our perspective, you know, we buy tables for all of Canada and we're often told that there's going to be a lot of suppression, but it, it doesn't really matter as long as for a lot of our members, there's data available or for a good chunk of CSDs, there's data available, then the rest of the suppressed data. And if all the cross tabulations cause suppression, you can just use the totals. You don't have to cross tab by everything. But yeah. it's, it's still worth it's still worth it for us to get a lot of cross tabulations and a lot of low level data. But that's excellent. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think for us, it's, it's more of a challenge of finding the, the right balance, because the more like the more geographic units you include, the larger the files become and the more processing time it takes. Right. So we, we've you know, we, we've, we've sort of benchmarked how long it takes to run. Uh, a certain number of cells, like a four billion cell table, takes us six hours to run. And so, if we do that over and over again, we soon quickly run out of time to meet our release schedule. So we have to find that that right balance. And if that means having some, uh, having a a you know finding the right amount of CSDs to include, uh, where all the other ones would be zeros and would not be adding value to the to the actual outputs, that's what we're trying to figure out. Understood. Okay, that's good. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, great. And we've got a good question coming from Matt about um, the LGBTQ plus population. Um, so how are you dealing with the presumably small numbers of the LGBTQ population across Canada? At the City of Toronto, a lot of people are looking for sub CD data for this variable, but is that realistic expectation in light of suppression? So, um, Glenn and Joy, can Joy, you want to say something? First? You go like ahead. I was about to say, it's we have, it's something that we are working on to determine, like uh, the kind of the right uh, the right level of uh, dissemination. Um, so yeah, we were as a small uh, group, uh, Ashley, and we'd like to discuss the information as much as uh, possible. So we're working with our methodology colleagues right now to see what, uh, what would make sense in terms of um, do we do, can the province territories, some of the some six CMAs, can we go below that? Uh, and in terms of how we're crossing it with other uh, variables as well to, I guess, uh, come up with maybe a portion of the population across Canada or in, in specific cities elsewhere. 
What part, what release would that be part of? Would that be part of a demographic release or is that going to be? No, it's a, uh, oh, like that. Sorry, we'll go ahead. Have the second release when we release the uh, H6 in Jordan, but we will be uh, releasing additional tools and uh, we can uh, with each of the following releases, whether it's um, immigration, labor, income, et cetera. Yeah, I'll just point out that, that there's a that there is a technical challenge here that uh, um, once you you know it, it's difficult if there was to be um, three categories in this in this new gender because suppressing one uh, doesn't actually protect anyone because you can subtract the other two from the total right so it me would mean suppressing two of the three categories to to provide any protection so again as Andrea said we, and Dury said we're trying to find the right balance here where we can put out as much uh, information as possible while still protecting everyone's confidentiality. Um, and, it, it, and, it, and it isn't it isn't easy, it is a challenge. Okay, that's my last, oh, is it my last question? Yeah, all right, and there was a thank you. There's lots of thank yous in the chat box too for your answers. <laughs> I'll let you refer to those as well. Um, I don't have any more questions, so let's just keep you a couple of more minutes because uh, we've got a few minutes left with our StatsCan friends here answering questions. We'll see if any come through. For all the people participating, what is the, the changes for the 2021 census? What question are you most excited about getting data out of? Is there anything there that you're just like really excited to see? All right, so Judy's excited about the commitment to release as much as possible by CSD. See, geography is important to our people. We want neighborhood data as much as possible. Oh, and Peter in Vancouver was really hoping for beyond 2020. I think Glenn can speak to that. Yeah, so we will be releasing beyond 2020 files for census data. Um, it, we, we know how big the files are and it is one of the few formats that works with such large volumes of data. So we will continue to offer beyond 2020 for, uh, for the census products. I did see a question earlier on, I think it's a, a ways back and it is about, um, is it possible to release a blank 2021 standard oh. census profile IBT or other formats so that users can understand in advance if there are any changes to the way in which 2016 standard data was was released? Um, could I just, uh, I, I think it's to um, to Reagan, is that, I, I'm not sure if I'm, uh, if you could give me a bit more background on what you're, what you're looking for, you're just looking for a, 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 a uh, record layout for the profile or So she says yes. Okay, so um, so I guess a couple notable changes uh, for the profile is uh, there will be the inclusion of of standard of uh, confidence intervals, so data quality indicators. So there'll be additional uh, data points, sort of an upper and lower bound for each of the estimates and each of the the uh, characteristics within the profile. Uh, so that's new. Um, we don't know the exact members of each of the or the characteristics that will be included. A lot of that is dependent upon the results and we won't know that until we see the results go through the coding and imputation phases. So um, can't really give a an exact, we, we don't have a, a finalized record layout yet. It will be relatively similar to what there was in 2016. Um, just with the additions, uh, the, the, the new uh, content additions and, uh, and uh, the confidence intervals. Okay, so Caroline, you can just follow up in the chat uh, if you have any follow-up questions for that. Maybe you just need to go back and play with your 2016 tables again and you know, get your data muscles working.
All right, so another question on suppression. So um, in previous years, we noticed that the same suppression guidelines used Canada level data, whereas some population groups like the Tamils may be concentrated in tiny areas where they're actually a large group within in that area, but are suppressed at the national level, which cascades down to the CDCT level. Well, stats can use local suppression guidelines to more accurately reflect a localized population dynamics. Um, you guys see that question? <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a hard question. There is yeah. no, there is no, uh, there's no real simple answer to that. Is some <laughs> of it depends on on there are some some um, um, constraints on how we run the data, right? Like uh, we we don't want to we want to ensure that there is no residual disclosure by doing something. So all that gets taken into account with how we run our confidentiality rules. So um, I there there. There has been, uh, um, we have reviewed our confidentiality rules. Uh, we can't, something that we don't disclose publicly what they are exactly so that things can't be reverse engineered. Um, I would say that there is, uh, I, I don't recall anything where we are doing something specific to have local rules though. So it is more of a status quo in terms of the confidentiality rules again. All right, and a comment from Esther saying she's excited to see how much child benefit has moved families out of poverty and by how much. And that'll be interesting to see with, with 2021. All right, if I've missed anybody's questions, if you could just put them in the chat box again so they end up at the bottom of the pile here, or the, it should be the top of the pile, right? But it's actually the bottom, bottom of the list. Um, you can just put them back in there so I don't miss them. But personally, I, I think it's really great to, to have StatsCan with us. Um, it, this is a funny time of year because all of us who work in data are so excited about the census. And I think most of our, our friends and neighbors and maybe whoever you meet on Zoom calls regularly, not for data <laughs> conversations. <laughs> You know your family game nights and stuff if you're if you're asking people did you get your census card did you get the long form mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel like they might not be as excited as our group is about this can i add one more thing i'm not sure if it was covered somebody was just about the the information coming out and uh, what we will be doing is uh when we release we won't look only at the five-year trend, so 2016 versus 2021. Uh, we do plan to look at the uh, pre-pandemic um, information as well. Sorry, I meant the tax years 2015 and 2020, but we'll also look at 2019, what happened before that to, uh, to provide that perspective as well. So right, Glenn, you wanted to, I feel like every time Glenn gets a suppression question, his face does this like, okay. <laughs> no, these are great questions. These are great questions. So um, we, are not, we are not exploring differential privacy um, uh, for the 2021 census. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's something that we will, um, you know, uh, research uh, moving forward um, as we reflect upon our confidentiality rules moving forward and make sure we find that right balance. Um, I, I know in the U.S. that uh, my understanding is that there's somewhat mixed reviews of it. Uh, it's a pretty drastic change, and and in some cases it, it, there's a benefit, and in others there isn't. So uh, we are we are monitoring the situation with what's happened in the states. Um, but uh, I know they did a test before, and that's how they they sort of I don't know if it was tweaked their system is the right way to say it, but. They, they put some test data out before with it so that they could get a better understanding. We obviously did not do that for 2021. So uh, we were sort of, we were following the same, the, we were following the similar, similar format to the rules for 2021, but it's something that we will, uh, uh, we will be looking at for, for future censuses.
All right, while we begin to wrap up, um, I'm just going to share my screen and let you know about the webinars that are coming up with Community Data Program. Uh, so that's today. Uh, next week, you're going to hear a little bit about what people have been doing to monitor COVID-19. Um, June 8th, we're going to have an orientation for anybody who's new. And then we're actually going to have folk from Statistics Canada back again with us on June 22nd, looking at the community, Canadian Community Health Survey. Um, and I know this is an interesting one that we haven't um, talked too much about. So um, I suspect there'll be lots of interest in that one as well. Um, and then I wonder if the best thing to do is have, um, I'll get Mike, if you can put your email address into the chat box and then Dory, if you can add your email address into the chat box, if anybody wants to directly follow up with you and then they'll have it right in front of them. I'm using my wife's. Uh, <laughs> don't give us her email address. She won't be happy to get all of her data questions, I don't think. But yes, I should. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. We really appreciate you being with us, uh, Dure and Andrea and Glenn and Elaine as well um, from Statistics Canada. Uh, we really appreciate you guys working so closely with us and putting these webinars together for our audience. Um, as you can tell, we, do, we really do get into it and enjoy. Uh, getting a chance to ask you questions directly about stats can uh, so please go, go follow up for those email addresses if you have any other questions um, and we'll follow up with any of the questions that came in the chat um, that we can so thank you everybody thank thanks you very, very much Sherry. thanks again thank you bye 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 everybody bye bye So I think Sasha, if you leave the meeting, then it closes for everybody and that should stop the recording. Okay, that sounds good. And okay. will our recording download on my computer then? Um, I guess we'll I'll see. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Sasha. Thanks, Mike.